Ah, oui, pour ceux qui ont fait Uh, hello everyone, uh, this is the first live session um, for the introduction to Internet of Things. So um, I am Sudip Mishra and along with me uh, the two TAs you can see. Um, on my left is uh, Mr. Anandarup Mukherjee and on my right is Mr. Arijit Roy. So um, I hope that you all are enjoying the different uh, sessions. Um, so this uh, live session the whole purpose is that you know we can interact right. So although it is not a, a direct interaction two way interaction over video. But uh, at least you know you can ask your queries over text, and uh, you know sequentially uh, we'll be getting the queries that you have, and we'll try to address them. So we have uh, about 45 minutes with us now, and um, so you know please feel free to write uh, any question or if you want to ask anything, um, please feel free to ask that. Uh, remember one thing that um, do not ask me to explain a particular protocol or any particular architecture or whatever that is already there in the slide uh, in any of the lectures. If you ask me to explain it all over again, uh, I think that is not feasible in this short duration. Um, so, my you know if you have a query like that, my straight answer to it is going to be that uh, you know you have to read it uh, in order to understand it once again or you have to go through the, the recorded uh, the lecture once again in order to understand it. So, what I would urge you to do is to ask any specific queries that you have concerning any of the lectures that have been covered. So, we will start uh, one by one. So, the first question is what are the basics of IoT? So, what are the basics of IoT? Uh, basically, uh, you know if you mean like what is the prerequisite for doing this particular course, then uh, you know I think we have designed this particular course in such a way that uh, you know it, it is like little versatile in nature. Uh, we have designed in such a way that uh, mostly people from diverse backgrounds, uh, if they have basic knowledge of uh, electronics, very basic knowledge of electronics like first year electronics in a typical BTEC curriculum and if they have basic understanding of programming like uh, the basic uh, you know uh, programming uh, that is done in any BTEC curriculum uh, in the first year, uh, that should be sufficient. So, apart from that uh, you know the rest of the things basically one has to learn on their own. Um, the beauty of IoT is that IoT is uh, pretty multidisciplinary in nature. Uh, so, here there is confluence of uh, computer sciences, electrical sciences, mechanical sciences and many others depending on the particular domain in which a particular solution is being uh, deployed. Uh, a IoT solution is being deployed. So, um, you know those are things that uh, you know one has to learn depending on the particular um, you know particular environment in which the solution is being tried to be developed. So, uh, so I think uh, uh, if that is the prerequisites that you are asking, um, I, I think uh, if you have basic understanding about, about programming, if you have basic understanding about electronics that should be sufficient uh, for you. If your question is that if you are asking me to explain internet of things all over again, uh, first of all um, you know so I think um, you know what is uh, 
uh, what is the basic premise, right? So, the basic premise is that uh, in the same way as we have the current day, current day internet where different computers and computing devices are connected together. In internet of things, the whole idea is to take it beyond connecting simple computers and computing devices, but to connect different physical objects and things. So, these physical objects could be anything and everything that one can think of including uh, you know the computer that you are using, the air conditioning system of the room where you are sitting right now uh, and anything basically you know. So, depending on the particular uh, environment in which uh, uh, the problem is being addressed, the solution for which you are trying to have. So, these things could be anything and everything. So, there has to be connectivity between these different things. How do you have connectivity? So, there are different protocols and these are some of these protocols that we have covered in this course. So, communication, connectivity, sensors, sensors is required because ultimately it is an autonomous system. Um, so, there are a lot of different sensors that are there. These sensors, they are collecting, uh, uh, they are sensing different data. Uh, from the physical environment and uh, the sense data will have to be processed. So, the data are taken over the uh, over the communication medium, uh, typically it is a wireless communication medium and uh, so this data uh, these are collected somewhere, stored somewhere, these are processed also further and when they are going to be processed, how they are going to be processed that is where you have the concept of you know different concepts are there concepts of uh, cloud computing, fog computing, data center networks and some of these we have already covered in the course later on. You have not uh, you know come to uh, come that far yet uh, in the uh, in the lectures that have been uh, shown to you uh, so far through the portal. So, these are uh, some of the stuff. Um, so, you have uh, a confluence of number of different technologies IOT. The beauty of IOT is it is not a singular technology right. So, there are so many different technologies that are there and I already mentioned about cloud fog and uh, also like data center networks right. So, that is also very important. There are advanced uh, concepts of communication networks uh, like software defined networks and so on. So, these are some of these different things that we are covering in this course. Although I say that the course, the name of the course is introduction to internet of things, uh, but there are so many different uh, aspects that we have con uh, considered. So, so, basically you know what I have attempted to do through this course is to expose you to large number of different uh, uh, different technologies, different aspects. Uh, so, that uh, you know you feel equipped at the end of the course uh, uh, to get all the concepts to uh, you know try to build something in real life uh, for addressing a particular problem. So, there are aspects of uh, communication th uh, that means connectivity, networks, security is also very important um, uh, you know se not only security, but uh, the trio that means security, privacy and trust all of these taken together. Uh, security is very important because we are typically talking about um, a uh, uh, you know a low power, uh, uh, low power, low bandwidth um, very resource constraint kind of environment. So, you cannot typically run your existing solutions like uh, you know all these RSA, PKI and the stuff that are there for the internet. So, you cannot really use them for the internet because it is a highly resource constant kind of environment. So, how do you how do you handle that right. So, that is where you need uh, these lightweight solutions security solutions for IOT. Privacy is important because uh, you know the data how do you deal with the data people will be concerned about uh, the theft of the data, the leakage of the data uh, and so on wh wh when they are uh, being passed through the network. So, how do you handle that and uh, mind you that it has to be a very uh, uh, you know low, uh, low cost resource uh, 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 you know very uh, very uh, uh, less, less resource consuming low resource consuming kind of solution. So, this is where you know all this beauty of IOT comes into picture. Uh, so, you have so many different stuff. Um, so, this is where you know we uh, we uh, look at the yes correct these are the questions that are asked new questions ok. So, uh, these are uh, some of the different um, uh, different aspects of uh, IOT uh, right. Uh, I hope that uh, I could expose you to some of these basics. Uh, I do not know what specifically you wanted to know from the basics of IOT, but uh, this is 
uh, these are some of these basic things and the rest of the things you will learn in due course uh, uh, in the rest of the, the semester. So, somebody has asked uh, link for certification not working. Um, so, uh, you have to really contact NPTEL um, for it. Um, so, NPTEL as I know NPTEL is already working on it uh, and uh, I think they will announce it soon. So, my suggestion would be that uh, you directly contact NPTEL, uh, send an in, uh, email to NPTEL because they are the ones who are providing the platform. So, next question is uh, ad hoc network and uses, um, ad hoc network and uses. So, I do not know what, what you want to know about it. Uh, if you are asking what is an ad hoc network and what are its uses. So, ad hoc network is uh, unlike our uh, most of our um, you know infrastructure based networks right. So, we have um, wi fi. So, wi fi for example, uses uh, fixed infrastructure uh, like um, access points, right. So, uh, so Wi Fi uses access points. Similarly, there are fixed infrastructure for cellular networks, another wireless network which uses base stations or which we commonly call as uh, the tower, right. So, all of these, uh, these central entities, they help in number of different ways. You can uh, you can uh, do lot of network management stuff uh, through these entities and that basically helps uh, uh, helps in forming uh, or, or helps in connectivity and performance in a great way. Ad hoc networks are popular uh, because uh, here actually you do not need any centralized access point or a base station and the networks they are self organizing networks which will be formed on the fly without any need for deploying any centralized access point uh, or centralized base station and uh, there is minimum minimal requirement for uh, uh, for uh, deployment of the different nodes uh, so if you have uh, different wireless terminals uh, and if you are connecti connecting connecting uh, in the well uh, in the ad hoc mode you would be able to form an ad hoc network so you do not really need so you, it it's a self organizing network kind of formed in an ad hoc way without the need for having a centralized access point or a base station which is also known as the infra fixed infrastructure. So, where uh, these ad hoc networks are useful? Uh, these are useful in a number of different scenarios, ad hoc networks are useful wherever you cannot really afford to have um, uh, you know time for forming lot of you know where you cannot really afford to spend lot of time or money or uh, uh, you know resources for forming uh, the different uh, uh, for forming the uh, for forming the network or for network planning right so uh, so like for example battlefield scenarios in remote areas so in remote areas uh, for example uh, when uh, uh, when our uh, when our forces right so when our armed forces they want to undertake any mission uh, let us say in the desert areas where there is already no cellular connectivity, where there is no Wi-Fi, where there is no fixed infrastructure connectivity and you have to form a network on the fly, right. So, uh, so basically ad hoc networks will be very popular, but remember one thing that although ad hoc networks are very popular because you do not really have to invest in terms of planning for the resources and so on and so forth, but the main problem is that ad hoc networks. Um, and the performance of the ad hoc networks are not always very great, right. So, they are little underperforming, but at the same time you can get connectivity where there is no connectivity and you do not really have to uh, invest a lot of resources, lot of money uh, for forming these networks. So, uh, so that is one where existing infrastructure uh, that is one of the uses like battlefield scenarios. Second use is going to be where uh, let us say in um, Mm, uh, let us say where the existing infrastructure have, has damaged, right. <coughs> let us say that you already have some fixed infrastructure in a particular city and there is an earthquake because of which uh, everything becomes, everything is damaged, right. So, buildings collapse, uh, existing um, uh, network infrastructure, fixed network infrastructure they collapse, nothing is available. So, you still have to 
form a network. So, ad hoc networks will be helpful in those scenarios as well. So, in times of emergency in battlefield scenarios, ad hoc networks are useful and like this there are so many different other uh, you know uses of ad hoc networks. The next question is that are learning all protocols important? Uh, yes and no. It all depends on your pursuits, you know what you want to do. If you want to have a basic understanding about internet of things, how things work and so on and so forth. The course has been designed in such a way that we expose you to almost the breadth of most of the things that are important and also beyond we have taken it you know we have covered the breadth quite well. Uh, but because it is an introductory course, we have also kept in mind that for each of these protocols, we do not go too deep into uh, these protocols. right? So, my suggestion would be that whatever we have kept uh, in the course, uh, you know you please try to understand them, uh, it is not very difficult. Um, uh, but at the same time, you know if you really have to dig into any of these different protocols, then uh, you know you have to do little more than uh, uh, what is uh, uh, what is given to you in the lecture materials right so <coughs> typically uh, that would involve going through the rfcs that would also involve uh, going through um, uh, you know uh, maybe simulating some of these protocols and so on and so forth so so this course you know we are trying to expose you uh, without getting into too much uh, uh, deep into any of these protocols and uh, uh, I, I think that uh, should not be too difficult for you. And um, uh, so, so I, I think uh, that basically answers your question. Uh, so, you asked whether learning all the protocols is important. Um, I would say yes, but at the same time it also depends on um, you know what you want to do. Uh, you know if you have a specific objective and the protocols are in learning too many protocols is not important for you, then it is up to you whether you want to skip it or not. But if you are doing the certification, uh, then you know you will be asked questions from uh, each and everything that is covered in the course, right. So, from an exam point of view, yes, everything is important. But uh, if you are talking about just from a learning point of view, uh, you know you have the option of uh, kind of uh, you know choosing what you would like to uh, focus more. Um, software, software tools in IoT. Software tools. Somebody has asked, what are the different software? What are the different tools in IoT? So many things are there. So for typical sensors, sensor networks, you have Contiki. Uh, Contiki also has its OS. Contiki OS. Uh, you can do simulations with sensor, sensor networks, and consequently IoT networks as well. So then you have Kuja. Uh, that is also very important. Uh, Kuja is also very popular. You have large number of different emulators. Simulators are there. Lot of different emulators are there. It all depends on what you want to emulate. You know, so for each and every domain, uh, there are uh, so many. Uh, each and every technology there is um, because IoT is not a singular technology, as I said before, right? So there are so many different aspects. Sensor networks is one. Let us say SDN is different. For SDN, you have different uh, emulators are also there. Um, so, so many different stuffs are there, uh, so many uh, simulators, simulators, everything is there. Um, then uh, you also have all these hardware platforms, right. So, you can play around with this, uh, you know, Arduinos, Raspberries, uh, Zigbee uh, modules are there, uh, you know, Wi Fi, and like this, there are so many different uh, options are uh, there for you. Um, so, uh, so, uh, I would suggest that uh, for now you do not want to uh, deviate too much uh, into learning each of these tools in too much of depth. Uh, I think it is sufficient uh, if you just keep yourself focused because already there is lot of material in it and if you now want to learn let us say Contiki uh, then uh, you know. So, unless you have a specific interest and you want to do something uh, where Contiki is going to be useful. I would my suggestion would be that uh, you know you do not deviate yourself too much uh, during the course of uh, during this particular course and later on you know if you have any specific interests you you know uh, things are because you know you are already exposed to all the theory 
and the basics of uh, uh, these different uh, systems and uh, uh, the basic concepts, uh, some practical demos are also there. So, uh, you have you will be capable enough to learn stuff on your own if you require to in the future. If you want to advance your existing knowledge that you acquire through the course and if you want to take it forward, I think that way you will be equipped enough. Um, so, um, can we blend IoT and uh, AI? So, I have been told that too many questions are there. Um, so, I will try to be a little brief. Um, so, can we blend IoT and AI? Yes, you can uh, and that is very popular already uh, you know because the full power of IoT one can get if you really blend IoT with AI or ML specifically and that we are doing right. So, my research area um, is basically internet of things and in IIT Kharagpur I uh, basically lead uh, the SWAN lab uh, which focuses on developing uh, different IoT based solutions and for most of the practical solutions that we develop uh, you know AI is an integral part of our IoT based solutions AI and particularly machine learning. Uh, uh, AI in terms of robotics, uh, in terms of machine learning etcetera you know so all these different 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 stuff we include we integrate with our IoT solutions. Next question is uh, what is the scope of IoT in the medical field? Uh, a lot of scope, a lot of scope and in fact, we are heavily into use of IoT in the healthcare domain in the medical field. Um, you know wearable devices are quite common, uh, wireless body area networks somewhere in the course later on you will be able to learn about where you know wearable devices and forming body area networks and body area networks what happens is these are like physiological systems right. So, these are these are sensor systems which are integrated with the physiological systems and you have a network which is formed on the body right. So, there are different protocols, there are different standards that support forming these wireless body area networks. The latest start state of the art is the IEEE 802.15.6 standard. Uh, uh, and uh, 802.15.4 is also quite widely used even Bluetooth is also quite widely used. Uh, so, uh, yeah so there is lot of scope and particularly let us say uh, mon remote monitoring of patients, real time monitoring of patients these are all very common um, uh, in the uh, in the uh, in, in, in the in the IOT field uh, in the medical field for IOT. So, I am being prompted that uh, too many questions and I need to be faster. Um, so, um, uh, so uh, remember uh, that uh, if you are talking about healthcare, if you are talking about uh, uh, medical field, um, uh, then uh, there are um, uh, there is lot of scope and particularly for remote monitoring of patients there is even more scope. So, what is important is how do you what do you deal with the data, what do you deal with that, how do you deal with the data. How, because you know once you get all these different data. Uh, so, analytics come into picture and we are talking about not simple analytics, but real time analytics because if you are talking about physiological monitoring of patients etcetera etcetera and somebody getting a heart attack and uh, if you are not able to cope up with the real time analytics then uh, if you are not doing real time analytics then it might so happen that somebody gets an heart attack and then, then that is predicted you know whether somebody is going to get the heart attack that is going to be predicted at a later point of time maybe few seconds later and that is not good right. So, how, when, where uh, you are going to do the analytics, what type of tools you are going to use, which type of machine learning you are going to use, which algorithms, which machine learning algorithms you are going to execute, where you are going to execute in situ in the device at the edge in the fog or in the cloud or you can have the data stored in some data center somewhere for uh, you know. Uh, or later execution. So, these are different issues that are there. Jobs related to IoT is the next question, jobs related to IoT it is a very interesting question. Uh, IoT field is becoming very popular, IoT technology as a whole is becoming very popular. Uh, there is lot of government private sector funding already in terms of research, implementation, deployment and so on. Smart cities are being, de are being developed uh, not only in our country you must be aware of all the smart city projects. In smart cities IoT is an integral part of uh, IoT technologies are integral part of the development. 
So when you are talking about this kind of development in real life, it is also quite expected that the jobs are also going to increase in number and already you know IoT everywhere globally, you know anywhere you go whether it is a developing country or a developed country, IoT is something that is very core, that is very integral. It has already in the last few years, it has already become very popular, it is going to become popular even more, that is what we predict, it is going to uh, become popular even more and everywhere you are going to see the effects of uh, uh, you know use of adoption of IoT. And uh, so, the consequence is going to be what? You need more manpower, more trained manpower like people like you who are doing these courses and the certified ones particularly, you are going to have acquire you know you are going to acquire enough knowledge to get started, to get started and later on you know advance your knowledge beyond what you have learnt in this course and uh, you become a skilled manpower uh, to apply for some job somewhere right. So, this is going to be uh, a very uh, useful training for you. Next question is realization of taught protocols from a practical point of view. Hmm. I do not know again uh, what exactly uh, you mean realization of taught protocols. So, basically you know if you are talking about these communication protocols uh, that you have learnt and their practical uh, you know use, um, these are all you know. So, I have not taught anything uh, that is like a fairy tale that is something that is imaginary right uh, everything you know has its scope uh, whether it is zigbee whether it is bluetooth whether it is uh, you know uh, some other protocol so all these protocols that we you have learned everything that i have covered in this course is something that is going to be practically useful for the realization for the practical uh, development of systems based on iot so, yes, you know everything uh, has uh, uh, a practical point of view. Uh, actuators in details, <laughs> it is an open ended question right. So, uh, as I said you want me to cover this course, uh, cover this lecture on actuators all over again uh, that will take me at least 30 minutes right. So, I have to go, go through it once again. So, best thing would be that you please go through the actuators lecture, you listen to it, you go through the, uh, the questions that are there in uh, detail and if you have any queries, uh, you know you can uh, ask in the discuss discussion forum, just post your question, specific question you have to ask, you cannot ask me to explain a particular lecture from scratch, right, that is not possible. Uh, so, you know, so all I can do is, you know, if you have any specific queries, ask those queries and then I would be able to answer those. Uh, so, uh, but let me just tell you actuators are a very important part of uh, IoT systems, uh, because uh, through actuators what happens is um, uh, you know I will just give you an example and I think uh, I have put it as a case study um, in uh, a later part of the course. So, let us say agriculture right. So, use of IoT in agriculture. So, you will find that uh, like you know we have some systems agricultural irrigation systems. Um, uh, that are already deployed in some parts uh, of uh, West Bengal. Uh, so, what happens is uh, that we have uh, you know we have some IoT based system which can monitor uh, the field condition you know. So, field condition in terms of water content, moisture content and so on and so forth and also the, the surrounding temperature uh, and uh, for different crops like for example, paddy paddy plants they have their own specific requirements of water intake. So, uh, so if the field if the environmental conditions are such that the, the let us say the soil moisture uh, has gone down or the water level that is required for uh, to be maintained for a particular paddy field it has gone down. Uh, so, you can use uh, actuators to automatically uh, to automatically start uh, uh, turn on a particular um, uh, uh, water valve right. So, so that the pump the, the valves in the pumps. So, automatically it can be done without any manual intervention and uh, that is a beauty of use of actuators and how there are different types of actuators. If you go through the lecture on actuators you will be able to see that actuators come 
uh, based on their functionality there are so many different types of actuators mechanical electric electrical electromagnetic optical so many different types of actuators are there so uh, you know the functionality changes but basically you know you, uh, actuators are an integral part of iot uh, next question is uh, pattern of final exam mm, pattern of final exam uh, mostly mcqs multiple choice questions and uh, you uh, you know uh, um, so many of these questions if you go through the lectures you would be able to answer but then some questions will be there where you know whether you have uh, you know understood the things properly or not or whether you have studied things little beyond or you have introspected little beyond explicitly whatever is mentioned in the uh, in the lectures so some questions will be there to discriminate people who have uh, who have acquired some premium understanding premium knowledge uh, than the the regular ones so that kind of is it will be a mix of different types of question but uh, most of the questions are going to be pretty much based on what is uh, you know if you have gone through the lecture materials you would be able to answer them pretty well next question in some assignments questions are indirect and not directly from course material yeah so this is i think something that i already told you that most of the questions are direct but some questions will be there uh, where really you need to you know you know this is higher education right so this is higher education so do not expect like you know everything is going to be spoon fed to you so there will be some questions which will be little tricky or not tricky uh, let us say that you know some questions which will um, help you to acquire little better understanding and so on so you have to prepare yourself for those kind of questions uh, next question arduino programming using python uh, i do not know what you want to ask uh, arduino programming using python do you mean like whether it is possible to uh, use python for arduino programming typically it's a c based language that is used for arduino programming and that's typically it is so but uh, yes uh, there are some uh, there are uh, you know if you uh, you know uh, there are there, there are there are some um, uh, uh, software there are cer certain platforms that are currently available that can help you to program arduinos using python so these are all uh, available uh, so there is for example the python api right so part python arduino api so that is also available uh, so if you search a little bit in uh, google you should be able to get access to it and there are likewise there are different supports that are available for python programming uh, uh, in uh, uh, arduino so uh, next question is what is beaconing uh, okay so uh, beacons basically beacons are like small kind of you know you can think of them as small pulses small uh, packets that are small pieces of signal that are sent in order to check number of different things you know beacons can you know can send some signal somewhere to test whether a particular device is alive or not beacons can be sent to activate particular devices beacons can be sent to check the current status of a particular device so like that beacons are nothing but small signals like signal pulses which could be sent for uh, multiple purposes next question is uh, iot in aeronautical engineering interesting uh, yeah that's very important um, uh, iot in uh, different forms are already used uh, in uh, the modern day aircrafts already they are used right so you have different sensors and nowadays the sensors are connected sensors so the state of the art aircrafts like uh, you know all these uh, double engine jet uh, you know these uh, a380 uh, and uh, uh, you know the dreamliner series and so on and so forth so these already uh, you know they have lot of different sensors they have different connected sensors many of them are wired connected uh, even the modern uh, trains also if you look at uh, the locomotives the different trains and so on so they also have number of arrays of different sensors right so uh, 
uh, and many of these sensors traditionally are cabled, uh, but you can replace the cable, you can have wireless technologies also. Uh, uh, you know, and so there there are pros and cons of use of such kind of things. Um, the the main problem is that if you are talking about aerospace, um, you know, aerospace basically uh, takes into consideration uh, or has a requirement of number of different environmental factors. So it has to be tested how these uh, low power resource constrained wireless systems, IoT systems, how they are going to perform. Uh, that is something uh, that requires rigorous testing before they can be used successfully in uh, the aeronautical uh, uh, domain. Next question is, is wired connectivity important in IoT? Mm, well, um, again yes and no, it is important and it is not. Um, so, um, traditionally uh, you know wired systems particularly industry scale systems typically you know they are there are in industries typically they you have large number of different um, sensors that are used uh, sensor sensor nodes sensor devices are used uh, if you are talking about uh, little uh, you know dated systems those systems basically you know uh, they are all wired the all the sensors they are all cabled right so and now people are talking about how you can replace the different cables and so on and so forth so wired connectivity is something that is traditional people strive to have wireless connectivity in IoT, you will mostly find we are talking about wireless connectivity, low power wireless connectivity uh, that is mostly the trend, but IoT does not mean that it is completely wireless. You can have some wired components in your otherwise wireless connected internet of things platform. Next is IoT in robotics. Uh, yes, uh, you know we for example, I will just give you an example, IoT in robotics is very common. Um, people talk about swarms of robots, robots talking to each other, uh, swarms of robot means you know it is a, uh, it's a um, uh, you know cooperative kind of system where different robots they are going to interact with each other and they are going to accomplish a mission together. So, IoT is uh, very important for uh, intra system and inter system, uh, inter robot and intra robot communication and, um, uh, and uh, trying to achieve uh, a targeted objective. So, IoT in robotics is very common, we have built IoT based systems for uh, you know we have built IoT based robots for agricultural purposes and uh, so uh, you know so that is there if somebody from agricultural domain is interested you know just uh, send, send us and uh, email send send me a send me a message and i would be happy to uh, give you further information next question industry connected to iot now mm. industry connected to iot now uh, as i said wired systems are already there in many of the industries and uh, many of the industries are also gradually trying to uh, replace uh, with wireless systems uh, industrial internet of things has become very popular particularly with the advent of industry 4.0 and uh, next semester again already there was one offering of the industrial IOT uh, course. Uh, so, I have another course introduction to industry 4.0 and industrial internet of things. So, uh, if you are interested uh, this course uh, most likely it is going to be offered again from January onwards. Um, so, that is also a very popular course like this particular course, this is also a very popular course, the other one is also a very popular course. So, if you are interested, uh, you uh, I would encourage you to uh, take uh, the next course as well, right. So, that basically has the focus on industry. Um, so, what is better? Somebody has asked which one is better RFID or QR codes? Premise is different the scope is different. QR codes you need some kind of a scanning device, some kind of a camera you need right. So, QR codes will require cameras whereas, RFIDs, RFIDs you need an RFID reader, the device and the tag they have to be in the line of sight. RFIDs are typically cheaper and um, so, the scope is different both are useful and uh, what you can access uh, that all depends on particular system where you want to deploy right. So, it is not like you know it is not RFID or QR code you know the, the premise could be different you know it all depends 
you know which one you would like to use uh, yeah uh, so so qr codes what you need is you need the cameras right so the cameras will have to scan right so it has to be in the um, yeah, you know, for scanning of the QR code, you need to have that reader, that means the camera and the code in the line of sight. And RFID is basically, you know, uh, you know, you need to have them in the close contact. They do not necessarily need to be in the line of sight, uh, unlike in the case of the QR code. So, non line of sight is also okay, but they need to be placed close to each other if it is RFID. And if it is um, QR code, uh, you need them to be in the line of sight of each other. Some uh, project ideas on IoT, um, it again depends on what you want to do, right. So, if you are talking about um, applications, there are a number of different applications. I myself, you know, I am involved heavily on different projects in agriculture, uh, IoT applications in agriculture, IoT applications in environmental monitoring. IoT applications in healthcare. Um, uh, then uh, there are so many different uh, IoT applications in um, you know uh, uh, you know unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, drones, and so on. So so many uh, different applications I already work on uh, in in the water resources field also. Water distribution monitoring. I am involved in a project uh, on water distribution. Uh, so IoT involvement. So so many different ones are there. Um, if you are talking about applications, if your interest is not on applications, but some projects to develop protocols to to work on the fundamentals, uh, you know it is ample, right. So, we do a lot of work, research work on the fundamental aspects of IoT. If you go through my Google Scholar profile, uh, you would be able to look at some of the latest research that we are doing on the theoretical aspects, uh, not only theoretical, I mean basically fundamental aspects, fundamental aspects to develop protocols to develop algorithms, to develop communication systems that will help in supporting different pro, uh, different applications uh, using IoT. So, next question is, is IoT a good research area? Someone told that absence of mathematical analysis does not make it a good area for PhD. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, it is a completely incorrect um, perception. IoT is definitely a good research area and whether mathematical analysis makes it look attractive or not depends on the problem that you are ad addressing. At the end of the day, you will have to really validate your ideas. How do you validate? So, you know definitely you know you need to take help of theory. So, without theory you cannot validate. So, whether it is the computational theories that you would be using or theories from uh, basic communication that you are going to use. Uh, communication theory or uh, computational theory. So, you have to use some theory, right. So, mathematics automatically comes into picture. So, mathematics is fundamental, uh, it will be there, but then you have to build systems or you have to simulate, right. So, that is where uh, the, the, the practical part of it also comes into picture. So, you need a culmination of uh, theory, simulation and application development, system development all taken together in order to work on a good PhD uh, thesis in the IoT area. So, uh, whoever has told you that IoT does not involve theory is completely incorrect. Please go through my publications, latest publications at least, then you would be able to see uh, you know how much theoretical involvement, how much mathematical analysis, how much mathematical involvement is there in addition to system development simulations and so on. So, uh, it is a it is a you know it involves uh, all sorts of things. A uh, lot of different other questions are coming. I only have two minutes, and I will have to stop today. And uh, thereafter, uh, you know, uh, I am already in the twentieth question uh, in the short duration. And uh, you know, later on, uh, we'll again in another two weeks or so, uh, we'll have the second session. And the rest of the questions, I would try to you know, please ask the questions once again. I would try to answer those questions at that time. I'll just take one or two more questions, and then we'll stop for tonight. Uh, so, developments in IoT, um, I do not know what you mean by developments in IoT, if you are talking about applications, if you are talking about the applicability, the, the adoption of IoT technologies, as I said before, uh, in, in huge way IoT is uh, coming 
coming in right so there is a huge boom of iot everywhere not only in our country any any anywhere in the world right so recently actually i came back from germany from a 3 month trip and i found like you know in germany as well uh, there is a lot of adoption of IoT technologies in research projects, lot of funding on IoT everywhere, globally anywhere you go, uh, right now IoT is a hot te technology and uh, you know you by registering in this particular course, you are actually in a course where you are learning lot of state of the art uh, 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 stuff, uh, lot of technologies you are learning. Smart cities as I told you is already uh, in place, uh, smart city development in India beyond anywhere you know different parts of the world the scope is different you know different people have different scope different countries have different scope depending on uh, their uh, existing level of uh, uh, maturity in terms of uh, iot adoption so uh, smart cities agricultural parking uh, uh, you know smart parking smart agriculture smart healthcare smart transportation all like so much so much of development is going on on iot so with this i am going to stop for tonight uh, rest of the questions, uh, there are quite a few questions that are there. Um, Anandarup has requested me to answer the last question at least, uh, that is on UAV network uh, topology, right. So, uh, I have skipped a few, the last one uh, probably is something uh, that some, somehow fascinates Anandarup uh, and uh, because he does a lot of research on uh, you know UAVs and UAV networks. He has, he has some seminal works, research works, systems that are developed using UAV. And um, so, uh, if you are interested, just send some private note or through the discussion forum, and Anandaru will be able to give you some pointers. So, network topologies. It all depends on again, you know, what, what type of UAV network to, you know, wh what is the practical purpose right. So, wh why you want the UAV networks to be performed, uh, what sort of deployment you want to do. Um, you can have start topologies, you can have a mesh topology. So, typically you know UAVs on the uh, on the air right. So, typically if you uh, because these are highly mobile systems right. So, you need more reliability and mesh topology uh, on the air is quite common. Uh, star topology uh, is also there like UAVs in the air and all um, you know controlled from the base station. Star topology is also qu uh, quite common, star topology is also quite reliable. Um, then you have tree topology or the multi star right. So, you can have a multi star kind of topology or tree like topology and tree like topology uh, is uh, prone to different kinds of failures, but at the same time. Uh, you know it all depends right. So, as I said before uh, it all depends on what you would like to do and you have to analyze it is not like you know one type of topology is better over the other. You can use different types of mesh is quite commonly used you know we use mesh topology a lot particularly because we want to increase the reliability particularly because these are mobile systems highly mobile systems you know connectivity between different points in the network is very important. Mesh and star combined is more popularly used, but you know there are other topologies that are also popularly used for UAV network formation. So, with this uh, I am going to stop today and uh, I am sure, so I, I uh, you know I am sure that you have many other questions, time is limited, uh, but in the next uh, session uh, we are going to have more interaction. Uh, I think uh, I, uh, this session was uh, quite interesting, uh, you know I could uh, get number of interesting questions from all of you. Uh, so, thank you for asking and we are pleased that uh, you know you came to this uh, uh, to this session to ask these questions. So, if you have any further questions in the future, uh, you know keep them all stored for the next uh, discussion session. Uh, we will announce the date probably in another 2 weeks we will have the next one. With this uh, thank you, good evening and bye bye.